At TennoCon 2024, we got to see a whole lot about what's to come for Warframe later this year. But the event wasn't solely focused on Warframe itself, we also got to witness the first ever dev stream for Soulframe, the new fantasy RPG from the Warframe developers. However, this gameplay demo right here wasn't received all too well, with poor like figures and many people complaining in the comments. So what's going on here, where's the hype and do we maybe even need to worry about Soulframe? Well, after a huge shout out to all generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, let's find out. Alright, first things first, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but instead talk about what we even saw in this Soulframe dev stream. In case you didn't know, Soulframe is a brand new fantasy themed game that the Warframe developers are planning on bringing into open beta later this year. Because of that, at TennoCon 2024, there was officially the first ever live dev stream for Soulframe, where the team around Soulframe showed us more detail and a full live gameplay demo on the current state of Soulframe. So what did we even see here? The whole thing starts with an admittedly very cool looking intro, I think we can all agree on that, that also gives us the first sneak peek at the character or ancestry creation before we start into the game. After that, we get some light combat scenes with smaller type enemies, and then what appears to be a new not seen before boss called Nimrod, a guy that can sort of summon lightnings and is all about electricity, so to speak. We also got to meet a new character, a witch, unfortunately I forgot her name, but in our hub world, she is the character responsible for color customization, similar to Warframe. And finally at the end, we also got to see our main character beat Nimrod in a one-to-one -one fight. That was pretty much it, summing up the roughly 20 minute long gameplay demo. But alright, so far so good, we saw some new systems, all in all this should be pretty cool, right? So why all the negativity? What is the thing here that upset people so much? Well, by looking at the footage and reading through the comments, there is one theme throughout and that is apparently janky physics and animations that don't line up. See, right at the beginning of the combat showcase right here, where the character goes into stealth mode and sneaks up behind the enemy to execute a backstab animation, if we play it in slow-mo, then we see that the sword doesn't even line up with the backstab animation. And this is unfortunately just the beginning, because in the subsequent fight, there is some rolling around going on and some animations that clearly look very floaty as if the character is actually standing on ice, it doesn't really look physically correct the way that the character moves with respect to their animations. Also specifically later in the second half of the Nimrod boss fight, there are some dodge rolls that look very weird and also there appears to be a certain attack that Nimrod can do where you need to jump in order to evade it and when we play this one here in slow-mo, every time our character lands, the way that our legs are animated with regards to how the character itself moves looks definitely not like something with AAA polish. Besides that, other criticism that I heard is that people don't really understand what's going on, like they see this fight but it isn't really clear if Nimrod might be immune or not, as well as the fact that some people seem to not like the extensive lighting and particle effects as well as the camera and screen shake going on within the combat. So all in all, as you see, there is quite a lot to talk about and don't worry, we will do that, but first and foremost, I think this is some criticism that is not to be taken lightly because especially for a fantasy themed game with a focus on melee combat, it is very important to make sure that your sword hits feel good, that the animations are on point, that the enemies and your character behave in a physically believable way because otherwise all that heavy oomph that you as a player want to feel when you really get that hit in, that is just not going to be there. So with that being said, you might be wondering, why are the animations presumably not up to industry standard and why did they showcase the game in this state? If you ask me, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, now before I go into the next chapter of the video, I gotta make a disclaimer. I am not personally affiliated with anyone from the Soulframe team and I don't have any behind the scenes information. Also, I personally haven't been part of the closed beta just yet so I didn't get to try the game out for myself and even if I had, then I would be under NDA because it's still a closed beta so I couldn't tell you all too much anyway. 
But yeah, how come? Why are the animations of Soul Frame presumably not up to industry standard? If you ask me, first and foremost, what we're seeing right here is precisely the very melee combat that we know from Warframe. You know, when you're in the open world with a drifter and you engage in melee combat with those Thrax units, then what we see there is precisely the same thing that we're seeing with Soul Frame. Our movements are floaty, the finisher animations don't always line up, and all in all in general, Warframe itself, since it came out over 10 years ago, has been having this thing going on with animations where they are just a bit janky. The big difference with Warframe though is that in Warframe, being a very fast-paced action game where most of the time we're shooting at enemies anyway and don't go into close man-to-man -man combat, this is a thing that I think has bothered literally no one. In general, with Warframe being so fast-paced, animation quality is, in my opinion, a worthwhile sacrifice to ensure that the gameplay itself is as smooth as it can at any given point in time. So yeah, when we get back to Soul Frame, I think what we're seeing right here is simply in order to save time and development resources, they went ahead and took the melee system plus movement out of the Riri, copied it over to Soul Frame, and maybe made some minor adjustments, but they didn't fully revamp it. It's essentially still Warframe, just with fantasy visuals on top. But now that we know why the jank happens and where it comes from, the question would be, is this something to worry about? Is Soul Frame in a bad state? Do we need to worry about it being the next failed game? Well, if you ask me, absolutely not. And I'm going to explain exactly why, in my opinion, this is by far not as big of an issue as people make it out to be. Just to be clear here, I'm not trying to be a white knight defending the game, I'm not trying to suck up to the developers, and I do agree that all those issues that have been pointed out are in fact issues that also I do not want to see in the final release version of the game. However, when you look at the whole thing from a game developer point of view, then those animation problems are actually not too big of a deal. Most of you probably don't know it, but in the past I have been developing games myself. Nothing professional, just as a private hobby developer, but still, even if you work on smaller projects, you do kind of develop an understanding of how a game development process works and what a developer needs to focus on at which point. So let me tell you what I mean. Soul Frame is a brand new IP. From my talks to some of the development team at TennoCon, what I got to know is that the team working on Soul Frame is actually relatively small. Like, there is no big overlap going on with people working on Warframe and people working on Soul Frame. They apparently do keep the teams quite separate, and it's not a 50 50 thing, right? It's not that of the 200 something people working for Digital Extremes, 100 are working on Warframe and 100 are working on Soul Frame, right? Warframe is paying the bills for the company, and most development resources are still, and will probably also be for the time being, focused on Warframe. That means that Soul Frame, the brand new IP, the game that basically is created from scratch, every model, every visual, everything in this game being created from scratch, this is made by only a very small team. This is, if you ask me, also the reason why we see whatever they can copy over from Warframe to Soul Frame, they do copy over so they do not have to dedicate the human resources and the development time into making something from scratch that they already have the code of for Warframe. That's why I think the melee combat at this stage of the game is pretty much one-to-one -one theory with all the pros and also cons coming from that. One very important thing to keep in mind here is that when you create a new game from scratch, then in pretty much every case, the first and most important priority for the team is to get content into the game, get to a state where the game is basically playable, where the foundation is set, you know, the engine stuff, the object loading, all the invisible stuff going on beyond the surface, so that you could then put the skeleton on top. Like, you know, a basic version of the game world, a basic fundamental movement system, some placeholder animations and objects, to then go and start to add meat on top, like more content, more characters, voice, music, animations, more mission types, more enemy variety, 
And if you only have limited time and limited resources working on the game, then the understandable decision from my point of view is to want to add more to the game to get it to a point where it's a minimum viable product, something that you could release into a playable beta, and only then when you've implemented every single major mechanic that the game is supposed to have, when you have implemented enough flesh, enough content, so that there actually is something to play in the first place, only then do you go and add the polish. Only then is when you revisit the graphics, maybe add some better reflections, a nicer lighting system, some sharper textures, all that stuff. This, as a developer, is what you add at the very end of the creative process, when most of the game is already finished. If you ask me, that is precisely the reason why we don't have to worry about Soulframe's animation and Soulframe's current combat jank that we saw in the showcase, because I would bet that this is going to be ironed out, maybe at some point during the open beta status, but definitely before the official full release. I mean, after all, the only thing that would really have to change here is lining up the animations a bit, maybe tweak a little bit here and there, and make it so that the movement lines up a bit better with the physical animations of the character. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that this is something that one person can simply fix in an afternoon and that's it. There will be work involved, of course, but compared to so many other systems like online netcode, like basic engine functionality, compared to all that stuff, fixing some animations should actually be a pretty easy task. But let's also quickly address the other issues that people have seen here, and that is that, you know, the screen shake, the lighting, all that stuff. If you've ever played Warframe, then you know that by default, Warframe also has quite the intensive screen shake going on whenever you cast an ability, you get hit, you fire a weapon, but you can simply disable this in the settings, and I am pretty sure that, you know, Soulframe basically running on the same engine will also have a setting where you can simply switch it off if you don't like it. So just because they had it all the way cranked up in the demo to make it look as spectacular as possible, I wouldn't worry about it all too much because I'm sure we can tweak it to our purpose personal needs once we get our own hands on the game. So yeah, after seeing the TennoCon showcase, after reading the criticism, reading the comments, I personally am still very much looking forward to the open beta of Soulframe. I'm definitely going to play it, try it out, and also try to provide feedback from my side. I wanted to make this video to shed some light on the situation and to sort of say, guys, chill, I'm sure they are aware of this, but this is something that in the whole game development process is probably only going to be addressed later down the line. So if you're interested and you get a chance, then definitely try Soulframe out yourself once you have the opportunity. And if you now also want to get all the info on what's to come for Warframe this year, then definitely don't miss out on this video right here. Another big shout out to Niels V, Demon Lord Cell, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Nost Linux Gaming, Lycan Shepard, Turtle Pier, Pepper Wolf, Ondakanio 2, Misfire DX, Streamjet 21, Signup King 5000, Griblib Yixi, Mihawk HE, Yagis, and all other generous channel members for your continuous support. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot!